So uh, we are going a bit faster than we expected. Uh, but uh, anyway, for those of you who are interested uh, in uh, our cool tool, I suppose, uh, the logic editor, and I, uh, I think everyone should be interested in it. Uh, I think you, uh, you, would, you would like the next presentation by uh, uh, Konstantin Homekov and his tweets and tips in blend for web logic notes editor. So, Konstantin. Hi all. I'm Konstantin. I'm one of the developers on the blend for web team. Uh, a significant part of my work is related to so-called logic editor. Uh, I suppose most of you have already heard about this functionality, which allows you to create a complete blend for web application without writing any line of code. So today I will show you some less common but still very powerful and useful examples of applying logic nodes in your applications and some brand new features introduced in the latest blend for web release. So, next slide please. My presentation will be covering three main topics. Firstly, we will use the logic editor to create a complete blend for web application with a user interface. But then we will go further. We will add some client server interaction to our application. And finally, some brand new features introduced in the latest Blend for Web release. I'll show you how to mix logic nodes and JavaScript code in your Blend for Web applications. So, let's start our workshop. Okay, we will start with a very basic example to recall some logic editor essentials. We will use a nice low poly landscape scene as a basis for our applications. Let's see what our scene looks like. It's rather relaxing, <laughs> I suppose. As you can see, in the left bottom corner of the screen, there is a lovely 3D icon. It represents another useful blend web feature called viewport aligning. It simplifies creating of a user interface dramatically. So we will use this icon as a button and give it some mighty forces to change the time of the day. Plunge vault into darkness and call sunrise again. Sounds cool, I suppose, but I'll show you with blend for web it is as easy as pie. So let's begin. Switch to node editor, then blend for web logic mode. I will choose a logic tree I've already prepared. So Every logic tree is a setup of logic nodes, which consists of one or several independent subtrees. Every subtree must begin with an entry point node. Let's create one. Here it is. Now let's take a look at uh, one of the most important nodes in our setup. This is switch select node. It allows you to react to user selecting an object. It works perfectly with PC mouse input and mobile touch screens as well. So the only things we need to do is to add the object to selection list. For example, we will add our button. And then we need to set the way to continue the execution of our workflow. To save your time a little bit, I will sometimes use a prepared group of logic nodes. <laughs> Voila. Now we will connect our mighty button with one of those prepared group. Uh, these groups are sequences of some play animation nodes. They will start object and environment animations almost simultaneously because the do not wait option is selected. So we need to add one more switch select node. Exactly the same. Add button. That's the way to continue. And I suppose cycle our workflow. Uh, another advice, don't forget to cycle the miss output of the switch select node. Otherwise, your control flow may stack. Uh, 
So now we have an infinite loop of control flow. Let's see what we've got now. We can click the button and it will cause a sundown. Then we can click one more time and meet a lovely sunshine. Our scene is fully interactive without only a pair of notes. So let's add more interesting things to our scene. Um, for example, imagine we want a lovely butterfly to fly around our scene during the day, but when the night comes, fireflies appear. So <clears throat> if we try to add additional logic nodes to control the insects, we may face some problems because we won't be able to control user input during the execution of these edit nodes because not all nodes have do not wait option. So insects need uh, the independent logic subtree, absolutely independent, but it uh, must somehow receive a signal about changing the time of the day. So uh, we need some signaling mechanism. Uh, global variables are exactly what we need. They will help us to deal with this problem. So now a few words about variables. In the logic editor, variables are used um, to control the execution flow. They are declared in the variable store node. Let's add one. Here it is. To declare a new variable, we should select the coding option. As you can see, uh, we can uh, specify variable na uh, name, variable type, and variable value, and variable scope. So what's about scope? Variables with no global option selected are considered as local variables. This means that they can only be used in the subtree where they were declared. Uh, otherwise, variables with global option marked can be used in any logic subtree from the active logic tree to show what it means. Uh, let's create and how we can apply it in our application. Uh, let's create a variable time, assign it a value day. For now, it will be local variable. Now let's create another subtree to control our insects. Again, we will start with entry point. Uh, then we will continue with another key point node in our setup. It will be conditional jump node. It checked specified condition and depending on its result, true or false, it chooses the way to continue the execution of our workflow. So now we can mark one of the operands of this node as variable and we can see that there is no time variable in the variable list of this node because time variable is local in another subtree, but it will arrive in conditional jump as soon as we marked this variable as global. Now let's check. Okay, here it is, our dear variable. Let's configure our conditional jump to check if the value of time variable isn't equal for night, for example. This means that it is day. So. We will continue with butterfly group of node. Otherwise, we will choose fireflies group of nodes. So, uh, this group of nodes uh, consists of transform object and move to nodes. These nodes are used to procedurally change object location, rotation, and scale. Uh, the only difference is that transform object uh, use distinct values for all its parameters and move to node only specify the destination object for the transition. So now let's again cycle our workflow here. Okay, the only thing we need to do here is to change the value of our variable time after pressing the mighty button. So we need two more variable store nodes. This time, uh, no 
new variable option selected. So this node will only assign a new value to our variable. Here we will assign value night. And here we will, oh sorry, assign a value day. As you can see, the interface of the logic editor is similar to other native Blender node systems. If you are familiar with Blender, it won't cause any inconvenience, I suppose. Okay, I suppose we're ready to test. Let's check what we've got. Okay, there is a lovely butterfly. But when the night comes, <laughs> oh, there are fireflies. So that's the magic of the logic nodes. That's the way it is. So we finally have made a complete client-side blend for web application. But we may go further. We can add some client-server interaction to our application. Let's imagine the next scenario. For example, we want to send a message uh, with string that represents current time in hours to the server during the execution of our application. The server will analyze our message and send the answer, which will tell if it is night or day, corresponds to our request. So if, for example, it will be night, then the time of day on our scene will change automatically. A rather simple concept, I suppose. Let's see what we've got for this. I've already prepared a server-side part of our application. It's rather simple and straightforward. I suppose there is no need to look at it. Let's go to Blender. For our purposes, we will need some special nodes. They are JSON node and send request node. Let's add, I suppose, two JSON nodes. One send request nodes. And I suppose some more variable store to declare new variables. Okay, one will be our string. Let's assign it a value, for example, 11 point uh, zero zero. So the next will be JSON variable. We will use it to encode and to encode our message and pass the server response. I suppose it's enough. So firstly we will encode our message. There are two lists in JSON node. One uh, is for the passes, the passes for the field we want to encode. In our case, it will be ours. And uh, the next list is for variables, which we will use to get values from. It is also will be ours variable, from which we will take a value. So we will send a post request. The URL for, for our request will be tests, time of day. A request handler is prepared uh, on the local development server. It is integrated in our SDK distributions and uh, started automatically when Blender starts. So we send request, test time of day. The body of the request will be our JSON variable, and the response will be written to the to the JSON variable as well. Then we will pass it. Again, similar lists. The field from which we will take value will be time of day. And for example, we will write 
the response to time of day variable. Uh, it is interesting that uh, variables specified in pass list of the JSON node uh, are automatically declared. So we can use this new variable exactly after using the JSON node. So I suppose we need one more conditional jump node. to check the value uh, of the time of the day variable. If the time of the day variable is equal to day, we will continue with standard routine. Otherwise, we will automatically play animations uh, for the DON. Okay, I suppose that's all we need for client-server interaction. Again, nothing special. Let's test. As you can see, nothing happened because we sent 11.00 message to the server. But if we will change, but if we change it to, for example, twenty three zero zero, the time of day changes automatically. Again, no code at all. So, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, <laughs> I can show you a lot more. In the latest Blend4 app release, we introduced a new features to integrate logic nodes into your JavaScript code. So let's see what we can do in our example with these new features. For now, we specified variable hours manually. It's kind of strange. <laughs> you don't want to reload the scene every time. So. Uh, let's imagine the next scenario. We want to detect the time of the day, the time in hours on the client side of our application automatically and send it to the server. So a new node called JS callback is exactly what we need here. It can use uh, custom JavaScript callbacks which are registered in our blend web application. So firstly, let's talk about a JavaScript part of our project. I've already prepared a project in our local development server which uses this scene as a basis. So what's about code? This is uh, the initialization routine of our blend for application is absolutely standard. The only difference is uh, that before, please pay attention, before loading the scene, we need to use append custom callback method from the logic nodes model. It takes two parameters. The first parameter is ID of our callback, and the second is our callback function itself. What about uh, our callback function? It can take two parameters. The first is so-called in params array. Uh, it consists of scene objects and variable values we, which we can use during the execution of our callback. The second parameter is array out params, in which uh, we can store the results of the, of the execution of our callback. So again, it's absolutely straightforward. So our callback get a current time on the client side of our application and send it to the server. So back to our scene. What we need here? The only thing we need to add here is one JS callback node. Oh, sorry. Let's place it somewhere here, for example. In JS callback node, we need to specify um, the ID of our callback. It will be get hours. 
and uh, add one more out parameter. It will be variable hours. So that's all. Let's test. As you can see, nothing happens again because it is only 15 p.m. now. So <laughs> I suppose we need to use some uh, a little bit modified version of our callback. Back to presentation. We will use so-called get hours plus 10 callback. It will add 10 hours to the current time and do exactly the same things. It's absolutely simple. Again. So we need to specify its ID in JS callback node. Get house plus 10. Oops. Okay. One more thing. Voila. So this is my complete demo. I suppose my presentation is coming to an end. So I want to say that I show you only a microscopic part of the capabilities provided by the logic editor. So I encourage you to use the logic editor, apply the things I've shown you, and have fun with logic editor, yeah. <laughs> So, thanks for your attention. Any questions are welcome. Uh, hi, thank you for the uh, great presentation. I have three questions which uh, I am very keen to ask from the programmer's stands of view. I'm a programmer, I don't usually use visual logic editors and I have several questions for you guys. Uh, first of all, uh, do the logic editor have a way to store JS callbacks uh, right within the, the tree? Because it's kind of not very convenient to store your code, your logic in two different places. So where do, not, where do you want to store callback? Sorry. No, like, I don't know, text area where I just write my JS code and it would be a bit painful to debug, yes, but uh, on the other hand, I wouldn't have like this um, this uh, coupling with the JS code with the site code. Are you talking about external text files or something like that? No, no, no. Like inside Blender, I create node and something like JS code. There is a text area. I just type my JS code in. It's uh, conform to some predefined interface and works. Mm. It, it is a rather interesting idea, but uh, as, as I thought. Uh, it's very unusual suggestion. Really, don't face, uh, didn't face it before. Well, it's like <laughs> my, uh, my my thoughts. And second of all, uh, I, I uh, why didn't you use for JSON something like JSON path or JS path or some something else? To declarative to de declaratively extract data from JSON because I believe maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that the functionality of the J JSON node is quite poor. As I understand, you can just only take some fields and uh, place them into variables, and if you have um, if you have collections in these uh, fields, you have to take another JSON uh, node parse JSON again and again and again, and if you have some well complicated JSON, for example, Geo JSON, which can be quite nested in itself, uh, you will, it, it, it will be absolute pain to extract coordinates of any point, for example. And there are already solutions in the market, as I said, JSON pass, JS pass, which allow XPath-like syntax for extracting data. 
uh, we've already introduced a feature to uh, use nested fields in JSON objects, so you don't need to use JSON, <laughs> not okay. one after another. Uh, so okay. th the point is the limiter. I this I don't include this information in my presentation because I have <laughs> okay. enough time. But of course you can do it. We try um, to make it uh, uh -huh. use, really useful. No. Okay, and my last question. Uh, you've shown us that uh, when we start an animation for uh, sundown and uh, changing of lighting, it, it takes some time. What will happen if we, if I quickly press the button again? Mm. What? Everything will be okay. No, <laughs> uh, the animation will for will the, for the next time of day will start and play. So okay. the, it will abruptly change the animation to the, its end state and then yeah, like will be simulate the uh, dawn. Yes? No. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Look, uh, you have run animation. Sun, sun going down, butterfly yeah. flying away, everything is right, but you can't press the button during them and it I can press. shoot. <laughs> what, 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 what will That's happen? That's what uh, I've been talking about. Uh, there is a special do not wait option. So. Work. <laughs> so it will just abruptly change the state of the animation. It will not like roll back the sun from the half point. Yes, yeah, this <laughs> this is quite a simple setup of nodes. So, so there is a way to control such situation in the logic editor, or will the user? Bill will be forced to go to JS to write the, such a logic. Um, if uh, I understand you correctly, I suppose there is there are ways to control. And <laughs> uh, I think so. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. Any other questions? Yeah. When uh, when will you add a function to of change mode for camera style of node? We plan to, <laughs> to add this feature. <laughs> it is in work now. There were some conflicts with uh, internal API, if you are interested <laughs> in such things. So we really don't forget about, about this functionality. Yes, someone else? The not editor uh, seems uh, give us possibility to create a very difficult uh, flow of the control in our like in Blender application. Is there any tools to debug? Uh, maybe control uh, some flow. It, it's because in JavaScript application you can create like uh, a breakpoint, see the current state of our application, see the variables. Uh, there is a special debug node uh, which will help you to show information about current state of your application. I can show it if you're interested. There may be issues because it's not compiled version. Already. I suppose. 
fault because uh, this is a bundle type of project. It uses external compiled version of our engine, but if we will use a developer type of our engine, all information will be shown. So that's only this. It should work like, uh, like that. Maybe you can show it in uh, Euro, investment Euro. Possible Euro, it should work. So I need to delete just the back part. So, some more questions, maybe online, yeah? Uh, a lot of questions come from the internet. Uh, um, uh, how do you envision that the notes editor will develop in the next year or two? For example, we will eventually have something as powerful as will we eventually have something as powerful as Unreal Engine Blueprints, Visual Scripting Environment? I suppose uh, we will try to achieve uh, its great results. So we will develop, of course, our logic node system. Uh, for now, uh, I suppose we have finished with adding some standards nodes and will mm, try to make our logic node system uh, more similar to the native logic native blender node systems so uh, uh, i suppose uh, features like nodes functions for example combining nodes to create one compact function will be available in the next uh, in the near future next year maybe so. uh, the next one is uh, how to publish uh, the stuff on the development server on the production how how to publish all this uh, for the production server this stuff is published as regular blend for web application so for example if you use uh, html export which, which supports logic nodes it's absolutely simple uh, deploying the project with javascript is standard too uh, we have tutorials on our website how to deploy your projects on the web servers uh, okay, uh, what about some networking nodes? Uh, yeah, networking nodes. S sorry, I <laughs> don't understand the question. Uh, I, as I understand, uh, uh, the question is about uh, what's what is the status status. Uh, of the networking communication nodes used uh, to uh, make requests to servers and, and so on and so on. Um, so I showed you some of them, but uh, I will answer in general. Uh, the logic editor, and not only the logic editor, uh, many other blend for features are developed uh, according to the users reviews, uh, advices and requests on the forum. So I encourage everybody to enter our community, ask questions on our forums and uh, take a part in life of our engine. So you may really affect the future of blend for web So 
I suppose it is a general answer <laughs> about the future of the logic node system. So everybody can take a significant part in it. And uh, another question uh, is about uh, WebRTC data channel. Uh, maybe it's just a proposal. Uh, do no, I rephrase it? Uh, do you have some plans to implement WebRTC channel to stream r stream textures in real time? In, in the logic editor? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, su <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, we haven't such plans for now. Okay, I think that's that's all. Oh, may maybe maybe th that guy uh, if, uh, who asked about uh, server side meant uh, scripting U using logic nodes to make uh, scripting to create to script co uh, logic on server side. Do we have plans to do such feature? Mm. Logic nodes, I suppose, has nothing to do with the server side. Uh, Teal, blend for web, <laughs> haven't <laughs> anything to do with the server side of application. So, blend for web is a client side part of your mm -hmm. application. I suggest uh, the guy in the chat is asking to show you some server scripts. Is it possible to show uh, on the screen now? Question. It is possible, but it is absolutely simple, and uh, it is in our SDK distribution. Still, what I may show you. still our um, <laughs> if he users wants to are very interested. <laughs> Somebody is thinking that I'm fooling around. <laughs> 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 that it is only the trick. Okay, here is the server-side request handler. <laughs> Perhaps you can put it in uh, in the office and Zoom. So, the Tornado uh, embedded web server is used, so the code is is really short, and it looks like this. Mm, there is nothing serious about it. It's just for testing and for demo. Yes, just there is no meaning of the life <laughs> in this <laughs> request handler. Just a simple Trojan. <laughs> Yeah, some more questions, or that's all. More questions. <laughs> okay, I'll see maybe simple one. Have you made any comparison between JavaScript and nodes? Pure JavaScript and, uh, yeah. Do you mean performance? Or? Performance comparison, yeah. Uh, if you have made any, or you know, there, there are uh, any significant uh, differences? I uh, haven't made uh, exact uh, tests, but uh, as we see from our demos, 
the performance uh, of the logic node system is uh, cl uh, close, is rather close to the API methods performance. So if you if you make if you are making a small or a medium size project, performance won't be an issue with the logic editor. Absolutely. Thanks. Something else? No. No. Okay. Thank Thanks. you very much again.